Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Lisa Jones Engel. She's joining us here as Senior Science Advisor on Primate Experimentation with the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA. She's joining us to discuss her prior work with primates as biomedical models and how the National Primate Research Centers, or NPRCs, have failed not only to provide any new discoveries or lead to treatment for infectious diseases, but also to prevent or arrest the introduction of spread of harmful viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Lisa jones Engel. thank you for taking the time. Good morning, and thank you very much for having me. Well, as Senior Science Advisor on Primate Experimentation for PETA, you've worked with monkeys in the wild for decades, I understand. Explain to our listeners how different their life is from the wild as opposed to the laboratory. The thing about experimentation on monkeys is it's been absolutely disastrous, and it, it actually, it, it must stop. So there have been more than a million monkeys that have been actually ripped from their homes in Asia and Africa and South America. They've experienced unspeakable horrors. Uh, they've been boxed up. They've been shipped around the world. They're, they're tortured. They're killed in the lab. Billions of taxpayer dollars have been wasted. And the, the horrors for the animals, the, the waste of taxpayer dollars, all this has led to is this utter failure to produce these successful vaccines and any meaningful treatments. And this is the reality of monkey experimentation. It's a reality that I unfortunately have lived, and this is a reality that is as far removed as you can possibly think for what it means for these monkeys to be in the wild in, in Asia. Um, macaques in, in the wild, macaques are a small-bodied um, monkey that actually have been the primate of choice for the biomedical community. In the wild in Asia, they are keystone species in the forest. They live in big social groups. They are highly, um, they move about there. They are glorious monkeys. They mind their own business. They, they understand humans. We've had a relationship with them for, for tens of thousands of years. There are these fossil records for that. But what we've done to them in the, the last 60 years by bringing them into the U.S. and dropping them into these NPRCs, has been a, a violation of their dignity, their well-being, and it has violated the fundamental integrity of science. First of all, why primates? And second of all, what are the National Primate Research Centers? Why primates? Well, you know, primates, they, people say, oh, you know, we, if we're going to, you know, develop treatments and vaccines, we need to experiment on our, our closest relatives. It doesn't hold water because for years, we use chimpanzees, you know, um, a primate that we share 96 plus percent of our DNA with. And then actually the scientific community realized, hmm, trying to, to use chimps has not been effective. You know, we, they don't get sick the same way we do. They don't get infected the same way we do. We're no longer going to use chimpanzees. At that point, the NPRC, the National Primate Research Center, of which there's seven remaining, the NPRC doubled down and they said, all right, if we can't use chimps, then we're going to use these, these monkeys, macaques. We've not shared a common ancestor with macaques for 24 million years. They are much less like us even than, than chimpanzees are like, like humans. Mm -hmm. And they're, the NPRCs use them because they're small, they're readily available, they're easier to keep in the cage. But in the same way that chimps didn't give us the answers, didn't give us treatment, macaques aren't doing that either. But despite that, these NPRCs continue to hold about 26,000 macaques in seven states across the country. There used to be eight NPRCs. But a few years ago, Harvard, which had one of them, looked at the facts. They looked at the money facts, the monkey facts, and they decided that keeping monkeys in, as research models was not the way to improve human health. And so they closed their National Primate Research Center. What person or what organization has the responsibility of oversight as far as these animals coming in, uh, moving throughout these seven remaining uh, NPRCs? Their job is to make sure that the, the monkeys keep flowing as opposed to worrying about whether or not it's ethical or even efficient. You, you are spot on with that one. So it, it, it's a monkey flow. There's a, there is a a pipeline of monkeys coming out of Asia and Africa, you know, 40,000 of them come into the, the country every year. Earlier, you know, a few weeks ago, we got a little bit of insight into this with that accident in Danville, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. when 100 macaques fresh off the plane 
on a highway in, in Pennsylvania. There was an accident. The monkeys spilled out. Three of the monkeys um, escaped. The CDC, which provides oversight for these animals as they enter the country, the CDC came on site. They recognized the risk. They recognized the, the, the nightmare scenario. And they ordered that these three animals be shot on site. And that's because the CDC knows that these animals represent a public health risk to the humans. So if these animals were in transit and the CDC and everyone who's transporting them already know that they're filled with these uh, these viruses, these diseases, are they just taken to these facilities and then culled there? If there's so many of them are sick, why aren't we aware that they're sick before we ever get them here? <laughs> I love this question. Um, the, the monkey experimentation industry is a billion dollar industry. Mm. There's a massive amount of money in this. And it's all about, it's just about, give me another monkey, give me another monkey, give me another monkey. If that one's sick, all right, I'll kill that one. Give me another monkey. Um, the CDC knows the, the threat that these animals pose. That's why there is a required 30-day CDC quarantine when these animals hit U.S. soil. During that period, you know, they are supposed to be, um, they're in isolation. You know, we're testing them, we're observing them for tuberculosis, um, for um, any of the pathogens caused deadly diarrheal diseases, uh, hemorrhagic um, viruses, uh, herpes B. In theory, we're supposed to be able to catch those animals that are um, infected in quarantine, but that's not the reality. The reality is that the, the animals, they, they clear quarantine, they you know hop on the truck, they go to the next facility, and then they, they break with TB a few months, a few years afterwards, mm -hmm. or herpes B comes through, or salmonella, or yersinia, or campylobacter, or any of these, these pathogens continue to, to circulate in the monkeys. Mm -hmm. And with that circulation comes the threat to the humans. What is the biggest challenge in having those seven remaining NPRCs close their doors, other than the money? Knowledge. Knowledge. Awareness. For people to understand that this is going on, most people have no idea that there are, you know, they have a, a national primate research center in, in their state, in their, in their backyard in, in some cases. This is a hidden industry. There's a reason why you don't see the pictures inside the laboratories, because if you saw what it looks like to put a monkey in a cage the size of your kitchen cabinet, put that animal there for their entire lifetime, if you saw them plucking their hair out, if you saw the diarrhea constantly splattered under the, the bottom of the cage, the animal spinning in circles because they are psychologically so so destroyed that their immune system is, is completely ineffective. If you saw that, if you knew that, you would know why the science continues to fail, why the experiments fail in these, the unintended infections that are not caught, the immune system that, that's undermined. People don't see that. And so part of my job is to is to rip open those doors because I've I've been, I've I've grown up in those facilities. What is your one thought on what the, the medical community can do to assist PETA in this endeavor of closing these centers and preventing others from opening? And then give us a website where our listeners can learn more. The medical community knows that if you, if you don't know what your patient is, is sick with, if you don't know that there's some underlying undetected infection, you can't, you can't help that, that individual. You can't develop effective treatments and, for them. They know that. And so with that knowledge, you know, if, if they are speaking out and saying, hey, you know, these monkeys, I'm not getting treatments into my patients because the animal model, the monkey model is failing. The medical community stands up and starts shouting that from the rooftops. That'll be a real shift in the way that funding is allocated. And so I'd ask folks go to go to PETA.org forward slash NPRC. You know, take a look at, we've got lots of information about these seven national primate research centers and videos from them, but also we make it easy for you at the Activist Center. You can click a few clicks and you can let the National Institutes of Health know that, you know what, I want my taxpayer dollars to be directed towards human relevant research. You know, I want to be looking at funding good epidemiological studies, you know, organs on a chip, um, 3D printed tissues, the kind of research that's getting us treatment for these diseases that, that are really crippling the U.S. population. We don't need money 
any more money for this archaic monkey experiment. That time is over. It's done. Those centers need to be closed. Well, Dr. Engel, I appreciate you lending us some of your time this morning. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and the best in your endeavors and uh, the future of PETA. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Neil. Take care. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Lisa Jones Engel. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 